Everybody, welcome to today's edition of Fail Till You Don't. This is a unique, unique episode. I have the privilege and and the just insane pleasure of interviewing a new friend, someone I'm developing a great relationship with, someone who has done some wonderful things with past tense of never that we'll get into later on, and um, who ironically worked with one of my favorite bands, September Morning, which I mean, I have September Morning stuff all over here, John McLucas. Uh, John McLucas is a YouTube content creator. He is all over YouTube, also has a uh, unique covers YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you subscribe to. There's some cool stuff on there as well. He is a producer. Uh, he is a mixer. He is an engineer. He has done some cool stuff with education that we're going to get into because I'm not too familiar with the education end of the world. And he's got a lot of great insight on that. So we're going to hop to it. John, tell people that don't know who you are. Well, essentially, <laughs> who you are. Let's have this difficult job of explaining yourself in like a paragraph. <laughs> okay, no, I got, I got you, and 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 I'm I'm pretty good at uh, keeping it concise too. So, so for people who may not be familiar with me, what's up? I'm John McLucas. Nice to meet you. Um, and if I had to boil it down, it's really come down to a few things. Like, right, it's music producer, mixing engineer, and content creator. And the content creator is kind of the new facet of it, and that includes like doing stuff with JST. That includes um, some stuff that should be airing on actually TV later this year, um, and a couple other companies that I'm working on, working with, uh, as well as my own YouTube stuff. But most of what I am, as far as my income, my job, my career, in the last over two years, really for longer, but like serious, serious, like the last two years, is the audio music end of it. So that tends to be just pop, rock, and metal music, mixing and production, just helping people refine what they're bringing in and having a good understanding of keeping intrigue and working with the emotion of an artist so they feel that the experience they're looking to capture is properly translated through the song. Oh, indeed. Uh, you know, leading us to you you working on a personal, ex ex at a personal experience with us, uh, Past Tense of Never had uh, hired you to uh, mix and master in one full swoop um, a cover that we had done by Depeche Mode. And if you don't know who Depeche Mode is, uh, I strongly encourage you to go check out one of the 80s <laughs> greatest synth acts, uh, the song Policy of Truth. And that actually leads me to one of the qu first questions. Well, also I'm gonna say it's gonna be the first question. It's actually the sixth, but it is about your, uh, your, your drum work. So one of the uh, bigger feedback uh, items that we've received regarding uh, focus group uh, listening of Policy of Truth is holy mary mother of joe pesci those drums now it, without obviously without spoiling secrets i'm not a secret spoiler i firmly believe if you want to know things you do put in the work however i love what you do i love jst i love drum forge and uh th these are things that i'm actually going to be playing with because you did that so like mm -hmm. What, like, where, where, where do you like? Where do you get inspiration from that? Where does like, where, where did you just? How did you develop that? I guess without giving away your tricks, like. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't even necessarily know if it's a specific trick. I think if there's a trick, it's developing a relationship with your tools to where when you hear something, you know where to go for what you need. So to make that not macro and voodoo or like you know, saying something without really saying it, you know. I, I almost don't even have a, a fit like a f real train of thought when I hear something and I reach for an EQ I can almost I feel in a weird way like I can just feel what I need to do because my ears are trained to hear what needs to be moved so in the same way when it comes to drums I'm like okay cool uh, I probably have a, a go to maybe maybe 40 to 60 samples that I may or may not turn to depending on like you know what kind of sign you know, what what what's lacking yeah yeah what's lacking do i need the transient am i looking for body am i looking for sustain um you know what if it's just the slappy like whatever that is i've kind of have my places that i go for that um so more than it just being like oh all you gotta do is take these three samples at this db and you gotta you gotta hit like it's really listening to what you gave me saying okay this is where you know, X, you think it needs some X, Y, and a little bit of Z, and then knowing where to go because I'm so familiar with my tools that it's kind of second nature in a sense. Um, same thing where if an artist says, like, John, I need it 
I want it to be like watery and open right here. I probably have five, six pads that are, that are going to be the answer. And I can probably pick the right one right off the bat because I know, and maybe I have to tweak a couple of specific things for that song, but it's like, you want water pad, cool. I know exactly where to go. And if you want more water, I'll turn that over, go over here for it, that kind of stuff. Master, master carpenter who knows his or her or their tools so well that they can build a house from the ground up as long as they've got what they need and they've been using for years and it seems like that's what you're doing there with that uh what kind of what kind of vsts like as far well i, I guess not so much vsts but we'll just say plugins we'll use the word plugins um do you find that are like just your quick go-to for say oh i need some compression here on these vocals Ooh, this might clean these vocals up here maybe i'll throw a little eq mm -hmm. do some subtractive eq here like what do you like going to so for me, so we'll, 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 I'll give you a quick breakdown by instrument. So if it's drums and we're talking samples, I might go, uh, oh my God, a, the drum forge drum shots are really cool. I still have, I'm still a slate fanboy in a lot of ways. Uh, I've been incorporating and then uh, make pop music. They have a lot of snare, like really nice snares and kicks and blending in like EDM stuff has been really fun. A little bit of electronic, you know, kick blended into the rest of it uh, ha has been really cool and just kind of crossing worlds because that stuff bangs like EDM's enough like metal it has to hit hard and intensely and very focused um, so probably those three areas is where I'll turn for that as far as like plugins uh, if we're talking vocals I have like a chain that with that Billy Decker bus glue vocal plugin but it's a very polarizing plugin so I have like my I have some overall ones I'll go to like Arvox Slate, I'm a big Slate dude. Like, Slate, VMR, and Q3, uh, uh, FabFilter Pro Q3 is probably 70 to 80% of what I do. Like, very, very simple, just effective. I know my tools within there, and I know exactly what I need to do. Um, yeah, what else? God, what else do I even use? <laughs> you had a video where you talked about at one point, or a post, or both um using plugins or buying so many plugins that you're just not going to use and i found that to be uh, hilarious because one i laughed at myself i totally do that it's funny because it's true and then two i ended up condensing my plugins down to ones that i i, I know that get used on a daily basis so no I, I totally feel you dude oh yeah no it's it's i i have drum shots packs i haven't even like categorized yet I think I have two still sitting like they're not, it's not that they're bad or, or like anything negative, but it's just, I just haven't yet. Like I have so many and I'm getting the jobs done. Like maybe one day. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's just very easy to get sucked into that. It reminded me when I was younger um, and I had, this is, we're calling cool Edit pro or we're talking cool Edit pro 2.0. Um, <laughs> I would take the, all the nine inch nails recordings, you know, cause I was a big, big Trent Reznor fan pull up the masters just rip it like zero fucks given and then find every single drum shot that i could that was by itself S slice it out i still have the zip file and then i you put it all together and, and it's it's in my collection of one shots as well of nine inch nail samples now i mean like you know i can't really use them in professional recordings because i'm just not sure like the laws on that at the time and you know i haven't even revisited there's stuff that's way cooler now than just doing something like that. But at any rate, it was such a nice novelty. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually pretty. Yeah, for like just doing demos and yeah, like you said, as long yeah. as it's not yeah, yeah. a pro, you know a professional product release or, or content release, and it's like it's actually pretty ingenious. I, I appreciate the hustle. Yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, I was starting the demos for Past Tense of Never. We had uh, what became Mama Got Her Gun and uh, a couple other songs that are still unreleased at this point and. I was using Orion Platinum, had a sampler in it. Like we talked about, what should I use? You were suggesting Drum Forge, so I'm gonna buy that and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, you know, the, the, the biggest thing that, like how, how full the mix was, um, it, 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 it wet in terms of like everything had its place. If my arms are left and right, like you could just look anywhere in the spectrum and be like, on a visual level because i mean i you know i can see i i see things differently with audio as far as like oh that just you know that that, that, that looks a little fuchsia you know and you know mm. I'm, I, to me that's wavy and airy 
you know, stuff like that. But with Policy of Truth, it was just, mm, mm, everything was, it, and you could hear the transients perfectly. And that, you know, so when you were talking about what you were using, yeah, y'all take notice. He just gave away a fuck ton of secrets in that little package of, of talk. So, and, I, and I'm sure there's going to be more coming up, especially with these questions I got here. Here's one that we're going to go ahead and touch on really quick. You've talked hey. about streaming services. Now, to me, streaming services are incredibly important. I have watched from the beginning of the Spotify playlist challenge. I um, mean, this is not going to be a, um, even though I really like it, we're not really trying to push that so much, just context. Um, the beginning of that until now, we went from 32 uh, listeners to 120. Um, we have dedicated listeners that play us every day. And we've got a few that are so hardcore <laughs> That this idea coming from, again, a huge inspiration, someone, uh, the band you've worked with, uh, September Morning, um, Emily Lazar, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right, I'm, I'm terrible with those things. Uh, she's posting on Facebook, yo, if you guys see the new Empire track come out, go ahead and take it on Spotify, follow us, blah, blah, blah. But she's like, repeat it and put it on one. And I'm thinking why would she tell her fans that? But I don't know anything about marketing, like just for real. I never went to school, but I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching this person who I admire doing something, I'm inspired by it. And I see other people doing things that other people are doing, bands that I love, like something clever and Venus Invictus and Blackwater Drowning here in the local scene, stuff like that. So I asked, you know, I asked a few of my friends, I was like, yo, you know, if you really like us so much, hit shuffle play and put that shit on in your office, let it play. Tell people about us. I mean, we, we've got so much shit that it doesn't matter. Now I've got some of my band, my other friends doing this. We just watched this jump. And then because of that, other people at these people's jobs, gyms, uh, karate studios are doing the same thing on a smaller scale where they'll be in their car, driving to wherever the fuck they're going, hitting. You get the point. You see in your mind, okay, that was inspired by Emily Lazar. And to me, I apologize for that little that little lovely. Experience. No, no, I, I like that story. I didn't know that. Like, so that's really cool oh, to hear. Yeah, she yeah. inspired that. She inspired that. I encourage bands to do that wholeheartedly, but they must develop the organic relationship with the person that they're trying to make a funnel fan, if they want it to be successful. You can't you can't Man. just be like, yo, dude, like like just hit play and turn your phone off so you don't piss off your boss. No, fuck that. You hit play and you let people hear it. You got to interact. You got to give them a reason to be excited. So why are streaming services so important to ban? Like, why are they, or blah, blah, blah. Why are streaming services important to ban skeptical about the new golden age of bands utilizing those services like Spotify, like, like Spotify to its fullest potential? So you're, you're, you're asking like why, why people are weary about like creating a strategy on those platforms? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've noticed that um, with, with, with challenges that are worth, with, 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 with packages that are worth their salt that actually give you information to execute and therefore obtain results, but you have to put in the work, work being, you know, pay the cost, do the time, do the, do the fucking labor and see your results because you, you put your blood and passion into it. No, I don't want, I don't know, man. It kind of seems like a waste of money. I don't know, man. I need some weed. I think I'm going to go get that 20 bag instead. You know what? Yeah. Redemption's coming out. Like, listen, insert excuses, you know? So I want to know why you think they're so weary about that, why they look at I, I I get it. I have things I love so much, but I would much rather do something that's going to have ROI on a bigger scale. And I have the numbers to prove it. Like, it's it's in the pudding. Like, it's there. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, for because I think more than... Well, I think there's two facets to it, because there's one where you look at it like... You look at it in the sense of it's it's still newer, and I think because – relatively new. Because Spotify is relatively new, anytime there's that, you kind of have this cycle where it's new. Some people do really, really well, and then people start advertising that they can give the results of the people that do really, really well who can. And then some people advertise that they can when they can't. Like, then there's this whole wave of con artists because they see there's money, there's opportunity. And then, after that, people become more skeptical about it. And I think right now in that, like, life cycle of opportunity, there's... We're just starting to feel that healthy skepticism of, like, people who will charge you, you know, 
and like not even try to get you on a playlist, but they, you know, will will just lie and say that they have that kind of stuff. Ooh, I mean, nerve it, touching, it, baby. Who? Yeah. Pay, they made on and a that's, playlist. That's, that's just, no, no, yeah. no. So, no. but it, it's it's those stories are what then make people weary when somebody says I have a legit thing because they get burned similar to you know if you if uh you know if you got che if you got cheated on in a past relationship it's going to affect how you perceive and you tell other people like all this stuff it can perceive how you look at things down the line even though they may not be related and i think that's a really difficult thing uh, but pulling back further i think people don't people want the things given to them in a sense i think that's an inherent entitlement gift yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the entitlement part, but I think a lot of people, they want the belief to be that they're not succeeding because of, like, one hack. They're, like, one, they're, like, the right hashtag away from, you know, like, blowing up on Instagram. Or they're, you know, they just haven't typed the right thing into their artist bio. Or I don't get production clients because I, I just need to to get the right filter on my Instagram photo. Like it doesn't, it's not like a big thing. It just, you know, I'm one tweak away and that hardly, I don't know if that's ever been the case, but because that's a lot sexier and it makes it feel like you're doing a lot better than real, than humbling yourself. If we're going back to the entitlement than humbling yourself and saying like, yeah, I do have a lot to learn. And if these people are delivering results and I can talk to the people who have gotten the results and like hear from them, then I should, there's no reason not to trust it and i think and i think it's a different approach in mindset because like for me if i see an offer and i'm skeptical about it i will dm people i'll be well, i won't say who but you know i've had some conversations with people about possibly coming on for for me to hire for for consulting and and it's not anything negative against this entity but um one of my big thoughts was like you know i, I sent this to my follow-up email i'm like hey can you tell me do you mind if I sh can you shoot me some referrals? Like I'd love to. It's a really important thing for me to feel comfortable investing, is to talk to people who this has been successful for. Um, and I understand the results will vary every like, and I'm and I'm not the typical client that you would take on, but I still need you know, as a consumer, I need to feel comfortable making the investment. Um, and so I think that people, it's easier for them to compartmentalize it as like, oh, you're a scam artist. You know, and I and like, woe is me. You know, the industry is so unfair. Rather than do their due diligence when there's an opportunity and find out what may or may not be worth it for them, and where they're at in their career, and make a practical assessment after really diving into the offer, the results, you know, what you get from it. Um, and it's just easier to make the excuse of like, oh, scam, scam. Oh, they're charging me money for for something. They say it's gonna get me results. Like. Eh, probably a scam. What do you That's think? Is the, yeah. Away. What do you think? Well, what do you think is the biggest thing holding? We're gonna say bands for a lack of a better phrase. Uh, back from just making the jump. Let's just say okay, they make excuses. They're whiners, complainers, yada yada. W what's holding them back? If we're really trying to help these people, and if we have the patience of people like, I'll just say whoever the hell's running the band academy page. I watched a few people go on there and say, oh, F this, this sucks, like real dicks. And there, and the guys are just like, no, like you really get results. Like this, this, these things have been happening with these bands. Like they didn't say the proof is in the pudding, that's game of telephone, but it's like, you see what I mean? Like what what's holding them back from making that decision? I mean, we're signing up for Band Academy here in a couple weeks. Why aren't others? I, I, I think, I mean, I don't mean, let's clarify, not the Band Academy thing. Why aren't, what do you think's holding the people back? Like the self, the self esteem, the like what, what, you know, I, I it, that, that that I mean that's obviously a very a very complex question with a very complex answer. But if I had to point out a couple of things, I think I can say in my anecdotal in my anecdote experience of the last six years that there is a still a lot of like misconception about how things can be done and. I think that misinformation, like people told me like, oh dude, you can't go to LA, like it's not gonna work, you know, come on, like there's so many people there. Like, you know, all these things where people have these preconceived things about stuff they haven't done. And 
that is extremely, extremely toxic. And I want to give a caveat because I know there are there are actually people that I follow and respect their opinions where they haven't done the thing that they might talk about or advise on, but but they're more the exception to the rule than the rule. Um, so I think letting other people tell them what is and isn't right is a really big issue instead of trying it for yourself and seeing if it's wrong or right. You are all Make hearing this yourself. You're hearing this. You're hearing it from somebody who is succeeding. Listen, I just, I, I want the point to be driven, John. It, it, it has to be driven. There's a lot of skepticism out there. I hear it because people will tell me and then some people will make snide comments on Facebook groups, but nobody just, they don't have the cojones for themselves, for themselves, their self-confidence, their happiness, their willingness to move forward, to just stand up and be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Bro, case in point, you said execute. You're like, yo, what do you got? I'm like, well, I got an iPhone 7 Plus and da 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 da. We did our first video with it. It was cool, but you know, it's not professional, but it, we really liked it and people were proud of it. You're like, well, go execute, do it. Okay, cool. We did it. And then here we are making it better. And um, we're getting a couple GoPros here soon. And, you know, it's step up from that. But, you know, yeah, yeah. and light these light things that I don't even know what they are. We, we ordered them, but I'm supposed to have them. And apparently they're the light things out of these big white rounds words and stuff and things they just make us look better you know the, exactly. how, you know so yeah again case in point with bands uh back to our next questions um i want you to explain the importance of youtube and the impact that it's having on the success of bands and we'll just go ahead and get a little broader and say content creators as well um yeah no that that's that's definitely been an important thing for me in the last six months i mean really like the last three that people have actually cared but um I think it's at least what I see as far as my own personal momentum as a creative uh, a creative service provider and what I see out of people who are doing really well is they're, you know, although I, I definitely can say that I have a lot of momentum going, but I think I'm also really good at, at pulling apart like you what do. people are doing. We'll real so, time it. We'll real time it and tell you, we'll tell the uh, viewers here how many uh, subscribers you have and all that fun stuff just so that way. I think. 1965 1962 something like that but as you were i'm sorry uh no no that no that's fine uh okay good we're still going um i think at the end of the day there's this mis i want to go back to it's, it's gonna tie into the last question too um there's like a misconception about the role i think the role of music is fundamentally changing with how people consume it actually I have a next week's videos is actually about this um but i i address it in a much more clickbaity way but <laughs> the the concept more plug it <laughs> yeah the concept being like when pre-internet entertainment was incredibly different than what we have now and that's predicated largely on supply and demand um and what else we can be doing with our time when it comes to consuming entertainment so for example um you know in 1975 entertainment big entertainment was the radio or putting on a putting on a record like that was a massive life-changing experience to be able to play on-demand music in your home with a vi you know a vinyl uh player whatever i don't know what the real name for it is um but now that, yeah now that we're in 2019 if you're just putting out music for people, like that's not really enough anymore because people have the options to go explore entirely different universes or, you know, they can, they can go learn things or they can go watch a music video or have some kind of visual paired with music that they enjoy. And just being a music creator anymore isn't enough, not to mention the fact that the attention span and the amount of mental equity that you need to take up in somebody's head to keep them in your universe isn't really conducive of a six month out you know six 12 18 month release cycle anymore like be again because we are so bombarded between our subscription feeds notifications on social media you know email funnels ads just everything else going in in our days being you can't 
there's no band starting in 2019 because I, I was gonna say like Tool is like the one exception where they come out of the shadows every six months to say Maynard might write some lyrics. Um, <laughs> but besides that, <laughs> well <they> earned. Are, <laughs> yeah, I've been following that for like years, and it's just funny. every press release cycle, well, it's just you know. I mean, Rammstein is is also in a similar boat. I'm a lifelong Rammstein fan, and they're just coming out with their untitled album. The I call it the Matchstick tomorrow well here shortly there's supposed to be some kind of spotify thing where it comes up on the phone and next thing you know oh. yeah you get to preview the album um at any rate like th that's the same syndrome well it, well but but the difference is too romstein has been around for a long time so they have a fan base of people that are dedicated because they captured them like pre-internet time but the people right now you know if i don't hear from somebody in f six months i'm not gonna remember them like, I'm just not. And if we're looking at the the state of algorithmically decided feeds, you really can't afford to lose the momentum and the attention span of the people in your circle. Because you're not going to be looked on popularly by the social media platforms if you go dark for three months, post one photo of you saying working on this record, and then go dark for another three months. Because you're clearly a low-value page and... Why would they push that when there's all these pages that are getting way more, you know, that are having people constantly engaged and keeping them on the platform? Like, so that's the other thing that I think about it. And but besides the the robot part of it, like to cat, yeah, to capture somebody's mind, it's almost like playing a role in there every single day. I think part of, you know, why you've I've kind of drawn you to me in a sense is because there's always been something to consume from me every single day, whether it's video, audio rants photos memes uh, a clip of something you know wh uh, what i'm doing in my day i'm doing this what are you doing like i've always had i make a very big point of trying to build community um through a lot of content and that is the more that that's the important piece within youtube like youtube is a part of that um and youtube is the you know the main place to go for like long form video and to there's obviously it has its place for specific things but it's more about constantly engaging people um, while not having it all be about you. Like, it's important to have it be part of having more community value and interaction and not just having it be like, look at us, look at us, look at us. Like, um, a, like a withdrawal deposit uh, type thing. Yes. Yeah, very, very much so. You since we're, since again, to really to quickly say, bands, if you're not paying attention, dude is giving away a shit ton of secrets in these, these, these words. It's not cryptic. You know, go on, tell them, tell them why that's so important. Like they, they, these bands, a lot of bands that are skeptical that don't believe that bands like Brighter Than a Thousand Suns, A Light Divided, two examples right off the bat that are just massacring in, in such a juggernaut fashion, social media, um, how Brighter Than a Thousand Suns hasn't even done a show in a hot minute, whereas a light divided uh, took a different direction in, in our touring. We're at Nam this past year. You might have seen him there, you know, and the like. Um, so, and that leads back to the whole content creation, the whole "don't go dark for a few months." Don't just throw up a photo saying, "Oh, our drummer left us because he slept with my girlfriend," like that one band did, you know, like like that kind of stuff. Like really, just consistently put content out there, you know. T talk about why that's important because I don't think they I don't think that bands again this is based off of what they've been telling me because they you know I, I, I just I, I'll go out there and talk to people zero fucks given I want to know what your thoughts are on this we're going to be developing content on it I hope it helps people what you got I don't believe most people when they say do shit on social media all the time what's up well I think th th there's a couple different sides to it um and i want to say too just in case there are some people i know that have gone dark it's because they're rebranding the band they're changing the name of the band and they're re they're changing what you there, there's some small caveats but i i i always hesitate to put them in because people think they're more special than they are and they think they're the exception to the rule and it's like you're you're you're, you're not uh i know i'm certainly not and um but kind of yeah going back to it like i look at it as a sense of you know, there's two options. One is, you know, somebody, I, I don't want to say like me, that sounds conceited. I'll say like me, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so there, there's a couple different options because you can do it in 
the sense of like, hey guys, you know what? Like, what are you up to today? You know, what do you think of of like this song that came out? You know, like at like literally just trying to ask people questions and interact with them and give my opinions and start conversation. Um, I'm posting stuff that's not all. I hardly advertise that I I mix and master for people. Um, also because I'm at the point where I don't need to as much, but um, it's very little me selling. Me, you know, because like you said, it's a withdrawal deposit situation. Like I'm building a community that's more just based around like interacting and like being kind to each other and maybe throwing ideas around. And then when I say like, hey, look at this or hey, does somebody want to do this? They're more receptive to that. I um, mean, that's opposed to if you think pre-algorithm Facebook days, the guy who knew if he posted 10 times a day about his show that people would see it, you know, 10 times because it was chronological and you'd post it every hour um, saying, hey, look at me, do this for me, do this for me, um, and how horrifically terrible that is. Um, and, and those people didn't do well, and those are the same people complaining about it because now all of the spam that got no interaction now gets buried because nobody likes it. Um, and that's, like, the difference of the value of being consistent online. I've, I've met and connected like this um, with so many amazing people because it starts in like a Facebook group where I'm just commenting on their post and we build like a rapport in there and then we add each other and then now we're interacting on each other's content and like we have this this friendship and relationship but there would be nothing there for them to be excited about with what I do if I wasn't on it all the time not not not, not all the time but like if I wasn't at least semi regularly in, engaging and posting something for people to either enjoy, be entertained by, learn from, laugh with, or like discuss with. Um, so if it's just a matter of like being that media company and community that people really enjoy beyond just your music or beyond your main offering. Um, because every single time you ask, like you said, it's a withdrawal. Um, every single time you put out a single, that's a withdrawal to get people to, to listen to it. Um, or to get the new people, maybe the fringe people in, you know, the people who, who are excited are going to be excited for it. Uh, yeah, so it's balancing that. And I think there's a lot more withdrawals happening than deposits with most people. They get discouraged. They think, well, social media is crap. You know, I must be missing something. You know, like, what's the one? And then they go Google, you know, like, what's the one Instagram hack 2019? You know, Instagram 2019 growth hacks, you know, five ways to t grow your Instagram by 10,000 followers in 30 days or some crap. Um, and, and then it leads to nowhere. Yeah. 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 It's not a, it's not a good investment. Absolutely not. No, no. I, it, well, like I had taken the time to get, research you and follow you, uh, engage with you to decide if you would be the person that I could go to the past tense of never and say, look, John's got his shit together. And let me tell you what, if I had known you had worked on the drums of September morning, um, the drum editing you were talking about, like in any capacity, um, before, like, you know, I had talked to the band, that would have just been a no brainer. The, the, the argument would have been, Hey, I would argue that he worked with September morning and we're going to do it because of that. Cause I love them. And, 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 and point being like, if you do your research and you actually spend the time to figure out who you want to work with, it works also well You do the same with social media, as opposed to Yo, let me just Google how did Drake make that meme? You know what I mean? Like, and just the laziness of it. That 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 is. Yeah, you're right. It, it's 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 tantamount. I see a lot of bands getting discouraged about that. Um, I would I would I would I would encourage those bands to just really invest time, work. Like, I I firmly believe you don't need a scene to be seen. You need people. You need a blanket that falls down behind you to give you more light. And you also need uh, power or power within your community to, to support what you're doing through mm -hmm. that interaction, through the purchase of uh, how you say it, like merchandise, stuff like that, through the streaming, because these are current trends. The, 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 these, this is what you have going on. And, and you really want that. You really want to be a part of that. Like, like can, can you tell people how important it is to stay on top of these current trends? Yeah, well, I think it kind of speaks for itself. Like, look at... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I 
Trust me. Oh, I'll talk all day. So, um, hello, people. I can hear you. I've got uh, the monitors on. You're good to go, brother. I just gotta fix okay. this. Okay. <laughs> I, I was gonna say, we're alone now. You're stuck with just me. I think we're alone uh, now. I'm gonna dance with <laughs> John Mitt Lucas and sing to Tiffany. Off key. Beautiful. Um, so if I had to, it, it's just important in the sense of being, like, this is super Gary V, but that's fine. It's about being unemotional with where the attention is and knowing that you have to go where the attention is. Um, there's like when, when people get weird about, oh, street, like, you know, screw streaming, like you need to buy our stuff, like cool. But now at least I perceive that as you're just kind of an old curmudgeon that doesn't, want to adapt to the way that people consume entertainment and there's no real good reason for that like come on like just let me just just don't shame the people for putting their attention where they want to put it i think it makes a lot more sense to find out why they like that place and then try to get in early and crush it like that's i'm disappointed i didn't come into like TikTok like right when it got bought by musically because i thought oh this is just a stupid app for kids um, and there's actually a lot of really interesting th things happening on that app. And I think I could have, and I still probably could get a lot of attention and garner like a bit of an audience on that app. Um, but the thing is too, if you're smart and you're unemotional about what's popular, because you know, that's where attention can be, um, you can do really, really well. So the importance of it is just like, do you want, do you take you this seriously? And if the answer is yes, like. I don't understand why you would complain that the new Jubu app is where, you know, metal's popping off. Like, go to where the metal's popping off. It doesn't matter. Um, it, 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 I, I, I don't know. I think I, this, uh, this, this ties into another thing. If I pull it to the, my touring video. Um, Please do, because we're going to get to tour nightmares briefly and not where we infringe on what you spoke on, but more so like, I got a story I want to tell you. And if you got a cool one, because I want to make people laugh, but I really want to impress that, you know what? Unless you're really, really, really good at it. Like, I'm just going to say Alice, because they're the ones that I know. I'm, I'm, I know them. No, no, no. Them. So I can see what they're doing. Know it's factual. Know it's true. See numbers. Know they're succeeding. Fuck mm -hmm. touring, dude. I hate touring. I don't want to go on there, man. I love playing, but it's like, Dude, all the bad shit, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, like, it's just not... Because, and before we get into the minutia of touring, I want to say that the reason I bring it up, tying into your original question, is I think people get romantic about the, about the past or they get romantic about the bands that they look up to, which makes sense. Like, I'm sure... You, because I know September Morning has, like, comic book integration. I'm sure that's crossed your mind for past tense and ever. Uh, like, it has, it has. Well, just to, to prove the point, it, it, it's just right here. I mean, dude, yeah. like, I, it's on the way from Amazon. The the freaking frame for me to put this in there, um, and I had to keep, I have to keep it like on flat surfaces and keep turning it over because I like looking at it. It's awesome. <laughs> and I don't want to yeah. put it in between two things to stay flat. It's cool. And the comic book, the Trinity. Um, oh, dude, read it. I'm not spoiling that shit for anybody. Buy that shit and read it. I watched them clear 900 something dollars of merchandise sales with seven people in front of me at their show at uh, Amos' South End in Charlotte, North Carolina. Like, their comic books are amazing. There's a reason that that happened. So, anywho, I, yeah. I, dig I, I digress. Um, please. Yeah, yeah. But my, my, because my point being, like, you, you know, the, the people I think that tour now, myself included, you tour because you see all these documentaries of like bands going on the road and it looks really cool and you hear all these stories it's like yeah the road bro it's you know and, and at the Parties, same time yeah! There's, there, yeah there's counterpoints to it and i've actually talked about this on, on an interview on on my show where you know the point being like yes labels and management and a booking agency is going to want to see that you've put together a couple of diy runs because it's important to know that if they take you on and then they say you know, for example, hey, past tense and ever, um, yeah, you're going out with September morning in 12 weeks. Like, you need to drive to California in 10 weeks. Uh, you're going to be out for for seven. They need to know that you can be on the road. So I under there are there's points there there's reasons to tour when it's appropriate and when you're trying 
if you're going to make a push for a specific label or to, to try to like push for the team part, I think there's a place for it. But I think people get romantic about touring and they put aside a lot of the horrific, like nonsensical stuff that they go through for the sake of doing it. And that's the same mentality that then makes somebody not want to like jump into Spotify and learn all about it or jump into, you know, um, like I said earlier, like, or jump into TikTok and like learn how do I capture people on this app? Like that, it's the same mentality because they're romantic about wanting to go on the road and like rough it. And you know, that's how you do it. That's how you, cause we're a family and we grind like that, that, um, uh, do you watch South Park? Oh, grew up on it. Okay. Yeah. You know, mem member touring, you know, like the member berries. You remember, remember coconut water? Yeah. Remember, remember the knife? <laughs> exactly. Like, like so many things that people get really emotional and reflective on and they want it to be like a certain way. Um, and it's just like cool, but it's really hard. It hardly is like that. Um, especially when it comes to touring and it's a really difficult thing to pull off. And I've done some successful runs that I think were very worth it. And I've done some ones that really weren't, but it's about being unemotional about the result and the cost and being able to look at it like it really is like a business um, and assess exactly why you're doing it instead of like, what do you want to do should be what is the best ROI for my time and effort and energy at this stage of what I'm doing. Hence why I haven't toured in a year. Yeah. Yeah, well, right on. Yeah, I mean, why if you're just going to sink into the red? I mean, like, and not even just money-wise, but like bad experiences leading to uh so I'm pretty sure that parts of this story are googleable. I found a way to tell it where as of now, knock on wood, no one's been able to find out. I just don't want to name names get anybody pissed off at me. However, this is a great story. So I was, uh, I, I, any tour experience that I've had as far as a musician goes was was related to performing. Um, and I never had, like, Past Sense of Never has not been on any kind of, like, big, big, big tour. I'm sure if it's lucrative one day we will. But now I was playing bass for this punk band. And they were a DIY punk band. And, I mean, the fact that there even was a, uh, how you say it, um, when you get paid, like, money every day per diem or, or, or any anything of yeah, that man. nature. Yeah, anything of that nature. Um, the fact that all of that really existed, like, I just, I got to say, like, I was happy because as a punk band, you don't really see those kind of things, like, as far as, like, doing yourself. You, you get the context. Mm -hmm. okay so we, we we're at this state um this state sucks it sucks it's a terrible state i don't ever want to drive to it again um you don't want to tell me which state it's just a state kansas okay and, yeah it was kansas it was kansas um we it, it was kansas like i got asked to leave a walmart in kansas because i had a Marilyn manson t-shirt on and it wasn't even like anything offensive it was just the believe on the back b l i e v e and then the jesus six heads like it, it, it anyways we're playing at this venue uh we're in the middle of performing like like everything went smooth the, the parts that went smooth don't matter so like we're on stage well they do matter then but not for this <laughs> we're on stage playing <laughs> next thing we know sound is cut but you're still playing so you have that second of you're like <sighs> You, your sound's gone and drummers play and the drummer stops and everything just is done the police raided the venue because the owner had a meth lab in the back and it exploded while we were playing wow and the fire truck fire department <laughs> <laughs> they came in. The, we had no idea this was happening. We're playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, um, yeah, Jesus. they didn't get paid, uh, and they had to eat that. But um, I think it's a horrible tour story because 
there's just some things that are unexpected. You're not going to be able to control everything that you come into. In the it's like if you go to Baltimore and decide, I'm going to go walk down by the pier and just look at the water and reflect on life. Yeah, it's not such a good idea at 11 o'clock at night, homie. You know, go check a movie out. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But that, that to me was a, that was a, that was a horror tour story. And uh, I was inspired to share that by, by yours. Bob sucks. I'm sorry you had to meet Bob, whoever. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. That's, it's hard because I have to sort through these stories where it's like, I have an experience being, you know, being on a label for like a while and then it went really bad, but it's like one of those things because I'm like, th I really want to tell this story, but I don't know if I ever should. Because um, I wasn't on the NDA um, with the situation, so I can I can technically tell. I wouldn't put the names in, but it's kind of obvious because if you just go back like three years and then you look at me announce what you know who I'm who I'm working with, you can find it out. Like pretty 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 straightforward. So if I made a video saying everything that happened, you could find everybody associated with it and uh, un anonymize it pretty quickly and I don't want to put that person through it even though I'm not a fan um, of them so it sucks because there's some of those stories where it's like you can go back and find they're it they're bad they're bad politics to tell the story the stories like the other ones are the Bob you know what I mean or like when you get to the venue and uh, the owner's so coked out that there's no money to pay anybody and then there's a guy looking for the owner because he owes him money for coke you, you know, you've got stories like that. Then also the ones who violate contracts. Then the ones who don't even realize that the they're having a show that day. I mean, that that happened to us. Like we we were playing yeah, a show with a touring band. Yeah, I told you about that in your comments. Yeah, that that happened uh, to us. Um, just to to avoid like you know again these are good like like you said they're they're people that yeah I I, I uh, but I don't want to like screw what you got going on up in the industry because I had a shitty experience with you. I'm just not going to work with you anymore. And if I get offered to do a show with you, the declination is more likely to happen. We don't want to repeat that experience of, uh, you know, that, that what that was. No band does. So when you had that video about touring, about like, well, why you don't think it's a good idea? And I get some, you know, you have your satire, satire in there to a point, but you really break it down. All right, yo, like this is kind of, like, like brighter, look at brighter than a thousand suns. You've heard of them, yes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But they haven't done a show in a hot minute. They're murdering it. They're just releasing a new a single here. They, they are the perfect example of what a band can do without leaving their house. Like they and like Randy, Randy. Okay, okay. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. Randy and Angelica but came out to support past tense of never when we were doing our first show with our new drummer lc uh josh was still in the band courtney's on keys and vocals i'm on guitar we had backing tracks but here's the straight truth bro we had no idea what we were doing <laughs> at all. not at all so when this when, it, when everything goes to start not only did we because we didn't know what we were doing we couldn't hear anything the, everything was just so loud that because normally we're hearing the backing tracks out of the monitors we didn't know what in-ears were like again ignorance is bliss whatever but not in that case I I ignorance was you're gonna have a shitty show randy and angelique are watching this and were so awesome just to support us and stand there we bombed in front of people we loved like dude when i say bomb i mean like instead of doing a mic drop it's just a bomb <laughs> i'm gonna put an effect in there and they'll still <laughs> But dude, Perfect. it was it was so embarrassing. I had to in the middle of the fucking first song, I had to walk over and just cut the backing tracks off. And I, I just like I stopped everything and told the members real quick, guys, we're gonna be okay. Let's just play. It's gonna be what it is. If it sounds like shit, fuck it. We're here, dude. We're already here. We're gonna get drunk after this. Oh well, not yeah. you, Yuri. Well, not LC. LC's an AA. Sounds like well, not you, because I mean, but but whatever. And I, I mean. We didn't really get drunk. It was just more of a speech phrase because it can ease attention. Everybody's fuming, but you can't show it. And it's terrible showmanship yeah. to show. Don't show it. Laugh. Trust me. And just have a smile on your face and just deal with it. You know, do whatever afterwards, but then you maintain it. And Randy has given us great advice since then on how to develop backing tracks. Now that we're a three piece, we're integrating them in our next show after this Bubba Flex show we have coming up. 
with our hired bassist from another band called Soul Season, who you should check out. His name's Phoenix. He uh, jumped on board to help us. Um, we'll have backing tracks in that October performance, the festival. Which is. I think that the, the, the point of that that tour night, well, that's not a tour nightmare, that's a show nightmare. But the point of that was, is like, you know, a story that bad shit can happen to you. You can come back from it, trust. If anybody, yeah. America loves a comeback. And so does your state. Your state adores it. It doesn't matter where, even, even Kansas, even Kansas. You know, so when you <laughs> when 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 you tap into that, like brighter than a thousand suns did, you, you inspire bands like us to do that, and I want to inspire other bands to do the same thing, and I want them to be inspired by you too, by by hearing you talk about the right way to do things because it's proven, not because you're trying to sell snake oil. Yeah, I have nothing. I have nothing to sell. Like. How, tell me, I want you to tell me how you got my business. What's your opinion of how I, how did I contact you and say, we voted to hire you to mix and master policy of truth. How did, how do you think we did that? What do you, what do you mean? Like, like, how do you think you guys did the vote or? No, like, oh yeah. Let me clarify. Yeah. How, so, so like what, what, in your opinion, what do you think, uh, was going through our minds like when we were trying to decide like well well why pick john mclucas why not pick somebody else um i mean you probably heard you probably heard several things i've done you we obviously got along we we had been commenting a bunch at that point and i think that conversation i don't know i think there's that one thread where we were talking about hiring a producer and <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that played into it or not. If we had a conversation about it too, yeah. we had like a real straight up conversation on that stuff. Um, but I think all of that kind of combines. And maybe I'm missing something, but I guess I'm about to find out. That was actually it. We, um, I, I hope the dude's doing. I'm sure he's doing well. I mean, he he work, he, he does fabulous work. It's just I had told the guy, this guy that we were thinking of being working with as a producer. Uh, that I like to get to know who I'm going to be working with. I want to know if I can like you, you know, and I want to know if I can develop a relationship with you. So when you put me out of my comfort zone, I'm comfortable enough to know that you're doing these things to better our band. So I don't want to smack you in the mouth when you tell me to go run outside around the building for five minutes and then pour a glass of ice water over my head and say, go do that take. I'm going to sit there and realize, well, I might be working with somebody who's about to get a great take out of me, I'm going to do what he says, she says, they says, whatever. And that person didn't want to take the time. That person went and put a big live video up, but rant about 30 minutes about what he thought a producer should be. And that said to me, okay, well, they don't want to take the time to get to know me. They don't want to uh, um, invest that, 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 you know, time for a relationship to see if we can even get along. And then you want to go up on Facebook and, and clearly put it like, well, bro, I kind of think you're snake oil, but I wish you the best of luck. And we're definitely not going to hire you. So then that's when I was telling you, um, we're just going to, I was like, fuck producers. And you were like, no, 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 no. I said, why? And you said, all these great reasons right here that make total sense. And I was like, yeah, you're right, dude. You're right. And then since I can't fly you out here right now, uh, I proposed to the band that because um, I have been inspired by your YouTube channel, the fact that you were one of the few people that actually took the time to just say yo dude like i think you have good intentions but the way you're thinking it's a little fucked and we really need to like talk about this because producers are a great thing and here's why and i was like yeah well he can manipulate the sound he can he can do things in a mix and in a master that may not be so much oh i, I got the take out of you but i can do some shit with this and mm -hmm. i took that to the band and they were like you know we want to do that we, we think this is a great idea because you took the time to develop a relationship with us and give a shit. You did not ask me for a thing. You've ne you've legitimately never asked me for anything. And you, you, you've engaged. Uh, you, 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 the times when I was nervous enough to type my first question, like hoping that you wouldn't think like, oh, is this dude just trying to get answers out of me? No, I'm just really inspired by what you're doing. I want to do similar shit. And I'd like to know like, well, well, what's up? And I figure, you know what? It turns out you're really good at something. I watched one of your live videos too. That's where I got the idea. Well, damn, I didn't really, you don't advertise, you do shit like that. 
that's where I got it from. So when we hired you, we were proud to, to get back this God fucking punching wall of sound. Just, just everything about that mix and master, like the bias that was eliminated by us not doing it in house just came melted away like the angel down the angel waterfall in venezuela is gone. like instead came this yeah so that's how you got it and and i think that you should touch a little bit on how important it is to develop relationships and and and, and take the time to really like listen to what people who want to work with you i guess want or maybe even need to be told that they need yeah well i think i think it takes a I think it takes a few different things one like I'm a massive, I think a lot of people, I think I just, I don't, did I put it, I don't even know. I, I put out so many pieces of little video content, but um, there's like a really big thing that I, I've been, I've been big on recently um, about the way that as service providers, we treat our clients and their music, because I think a lot of people get really tied up in like getting the job, cashing the check, like getting it out the door. And, and that's important. And that's important in the sense of like, you know, making sure that people understand that, you know, to respect your time, setting up the boundaries and parameters, um, you know, and like just, that's a whole different thing. But um, for me, I come from the perspective uh, that, the, you know, this person's song is in a sense, like a child. It's like a young child that you're being given and you're being trusted to raise that child and take care of it and nurture it up until, you know, it's like up until they're an adult, like you're kind of, if you're a producer, it's like you're getting handed a, a newborn. And if you're, you know, may, maybe mixing and mastering, it's like you're getting handed a 10 year old, taking it to 18, you know, but um, you're being trusted with a part of somebody's soul. And that's, I think what informs the way that I approach a customer's needs and when i have that conversation with them is it's not at i mean you know obviously it's like yeah i'm qualified but beyond that it's like i really do treat it with an, an immense amount of care and i care that we get along because you're not going to drop your kid off at a daycare where the person's like dismissive of you and you know talking about themselves the whole time it's like no i want to know what you know that i'm handing you my child like what can you do to take care of it and, and that just kind of is a, it's an entirely different approach to, I think, how a lot of people approach it. Um, but that's really important to me. And, like, that's why I've tried to be so efficient with everything outside of the actual mixing. Because then that gives me more time to be able to build relationships with, you know, clients that I'm possibly going to be working with. Because I want to be able to put more time into... Yeah, responding to comments. Maybe you hit DM me a question. Cool, I want to be able to hit you back with it. Even if you never hired me, like, I would still be just as open. Um, the only thing that really turns me off from that is when people are maybe, like, like mean. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll do it. But um, Yeah, yeah, that'll, that's a quick way to just, you know, the block button is so refreshing after a while. Monica Lewinsky taught me that. I, I follow her on tweets. And she's like, yeah, the block button is just the most amazing thing. So... You know, and, and I think that's something to briefly touch on, but it's a very important thing since, uh, you know, we're in mental health awareness for this month and, and, and it, 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 to, to be uplifting and positive, you know, there, 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 there's mean people everywhere. There's bullies, there's trolls, especially on Facebook. And, and, and sometimes it hurts, you know, sometimes when you, you know, somebody says some shit, you're like, ooh, you know, can I do with Jay and Silent Bob? If anyone is familiar with Jay and Silent Bob, try the back. Like, you know, if you're not, well go look it up and then you'll get the joke and laugh and go, Oh, ha, ha, ha. however, you know, you, you can't just go to people's houses, kicking their asses because they're saying mean shit about you on the internet. It's not worth the stress in your body. You, you don't know when you're going to die. Why would you want to hasten that and speed that up by having all this stress being upset about what people are saying about you on the internet. And it finally just comes to a point as far as a personal experience where like when you're dealing with bullies, you're dealing with scenesters and your elitists, or I don't care what you call them. It makes no difference. Um, I say that the whole H word, the haters, like, I don't like using that word. A lot of people do like using that word. So in the interest of pop culture, we include it, you know, you really like, like, I really think it's important to, to, to just 
show kindness like you talk about and and just you know if you're in your bathroom and you're like oh man f that guy whatever but like when you're on you know like you're representing yourself how many times have i have a facebook diarrhea said something stupid on the internet because someone said something mean to me the next thing i know flame war and where does it get yeah. you yeah you know what it gets you no roi so like you know that's that's that i, I think that like to give it back you know to you um don't you think it's important that like people that are that, that like, like how they, they, just, they should face these bullies uh, that are online or in their scene or whatever and just really focus on the main the main goal of like you know what forget them like it don't matter they're not they're not your fans they're not supporting you focus on who's supporting you forget them they're always going to be there who cares yeah i think people i think people get really wrapped up in being right too and that ends up I think people get really wrapped up yeah, in being, I, I, right? I had it. <laughs> Especially on the internet. Like, that's... Because it's hard to let go. I'm not sure. I can't give some, like, super sick Buddha answer to that. But, um, as far... Because you're talking about, like, yeah, just, like, letting it go. But it's... To me, that comes back to, like, my priority is, you know... Obvi you know, c continuing to build up my mixing and production and then expanding into content. Um, and those are the only th two things that matter. And if my purpose isn't being served in that then i don't want to put time into it like that's pretty it's pretty simple in that sense um because at the end of the day i still want to spend time with excuse me i still want to spend time with my girlfriend i still want to spend time with my family i still want to have you know opportunity to do all of these things um and if it's not serving those priorities then i'm not going to waste my time on it um and i think at the end of the day people there is just that concern like people really want to be right and decide to put their attention onto that stuff that doesn't matter and it's it's honestly kind of heartbreaking like when i see people do that it's or especially if they're just like outwardly negative it's like i really can empathize with that it's like you you really got to be a sad turd to go out of your way to try to make somebody's day worse and that's how i look at it and i just hope that they in my own head i don't say this to them I just hope that they have a better day and then I go on with my stuff and I know that if I just focus on myself, I can execute, I can do really well and that's that's really and all that's, I yeah. can ever hope to put into it. That's, um, I would never it. I would never want to waste I still respect their time so much that I wouldn't want to waste their time either. Even though it's a waste of my time, but I also, because I respect, I still respect them. I think they might be a turd, but I still somehow respect them. And, you know, I just hope that their day gets better or that their mood gets better or that they find a better use for their time and energy because it's sad to see it just being pissed away and putting out something negative. And that's something I'm so vehemently against. And that's why I am so, yeah, like team team stay spongy team kindness wins like that there, there's there's there is no less roi than just being negative really in general because because there's a time and place it's like when my girl comes home you know i i might de-stress about a work day thing that's frustrating me that's different but like putting it out there to you know and making somebody stay worse intentionally is just like a pretty pretty sad place to be um so I, can, I, I guess I'm just in a place where I can just wish that their life gets better or that their day gets better or that they maybe that their boss is nicer to them tomorrow and and we'll just go apart separate ways. And like you said, if, if it don't go too good, yeah, I'll just block them. Like, yeah, no oh, ROI yeah. for letting them hang out. Yeah, I don't yeah. need that one view. It's not going to change my life. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. not at all. It's a really positive way of looking at things. It, 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 that that line of thinking, you know, for bands that are, you know, having that kind of problem, you know, y'all take notice and uh, give it a go for, you know, it takes what, 90 days to retrain the human brain certain behaviors. Spend 90 days just uh, telling people in your heads, yo, dude, I mean, yeah, you, you suck right now, but I really hope you have a better day, bro. Or, or what, not, forget gender in your head. Just, I hope you have a better day on the real. You know but have a better day and then walk away you know and and uh I, I mean personally i've been working on something similar to that where i've just been trying to ignore it because <laughs> because yeah. like the bigger picture is 
our band is taking off and we pretty much just like said well the scene that's around here we're tired of playing at the same places and not like nothing's really happening the, the bands are all fighting uh people are dating each other this is a young and a list episode y'all um to, to put it mildly and you know we and a couple of other bands that you know decided well we want to do bigger things well who's doing bigger things let's find out who's doing bigger things that's how we got involved with last band standing which is where i met you through that producer conversation and now about to be enrolled in band academy for the record disclaimer this is not a endorsement of any of those um or anything in here talked about this is this is shit that i like and i like to talk about it so yay yeah. um but we feel that like t ultimately to help the bands uh, as far as like why all this is important, taking a risk that you spent time researching and planning and then you're ready and you execute, it's so important. And it, it, it can change everything. It's it, I've been comparing like local bands in North Carolina to our statistics on Spotify to see, just to see, well, what are they doing? If, if like they wanna go tour all the time and they wanna go do these shows and, and play to five people and not sell any merchandise and they've wasted 60 bucks in gas. And then you times that times 15 shows a year. Well, the band fund ain't gone, it's gone. <laughs> now it's swimming red, like Red Sea. So, you know, you compare and I see that like with the followers that we're at, like, 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 you know, with the followers we've got, they, they do the things that we talked about earlier in the episode. Uh, next thing you know, we're starting to see that it's paying off because the organic relationship is grown from a plant to a tree. And now mm -hmm. it's gonna grow into an orchard. All these people are gonna, like, like it's, it's we're, 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 we're getting on playlists, like, like and one day we're gonna get opportunities. How it happens, I don't know. Adam Nelson is something clever, said something real wise. He was like, you know, you don't know what your path is gonna be, but you just have faith and keep putting in the work and like, you know, maybe be like us for your band that has a song on a, a dragon ball z commercial and now like and, and, and how he signed up for the playlist challenge it's like if he did it you would know oh this is something you want to pay attention to a band that you know that's that's doing killer is doing a b or c i might want to try a b or c you know again like you said execute and see what you did wrong like you know it, it's it's just so important it's so important yeah yeah, and this goes to like another macro point that I've been really like a big a big fan of recently, and and for me it's about like taking the at bats. Um, and and if you're not stepping, if you're not executing, and you're not stepping up to the plate, then you'll never like get hits. Um, but you know, so you have to actually step up to the plate, take the risk of you know swinging and a miss uh, to have the possibility of doing well. And if you don't, like, you're definitely not going to have anything happen. And, w but within that, I think it's important that, like, I had a another conversation earlier today uh, kind of about this, where it doesn't have to be, like, the way that I do it or the way that you do it. I think it's important that people at the same time realize, like, you don't have to be a talking head YouTuber to do well on YouTube. Like, there's people, like... Adam Neely and Samurai Guitarist, who I guess are talking heads, but they're not like the, what's going on, guys? You know, welcome to the YouTube sphere. You know, hoopa doo doo Like, they're very, so today I have a, <laughs> and you know, da, 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 da. like, you don't have to become something you're not. Like, there truly is a circle of people who are going to like whatever you are, and you don't have to worry about changing what that is. It's just important that you try some stuff out, are self-aware enough to evaluate it, and then see if it's working or not and then pivot or we're keep doing it or you know or change the thing like that's i i wish there was more concise like detailed advice to give there but... is there doesn't have to be that's literally it what you just said is exactly how fail till you don't start it yeah everybody needs to take notice and again i'll punch this home until they get it this is not cryptic shit y'all like what john just talked about right there is how this started you know, yeah. I got to go to a an, an, an L.A. like, you know, studio that I found out is two miles up the road from my house. 
and interview a guy who's been recording people here for 30 years, Max Deering. He's like, you know, your, your I guess, sister Yoda, but he's more like actual Yoda because he's, I, you know, older. However, dude, like, knows his shit. It was the first Raven I ever got to saw close up, which I don't know, that's kind of cool, the whole touch screen stuff. And um, he, he shared a lot of insight about, you know, the ins and outs and, uh, of a recording studio and why it's so important to invest your, your time and energy into really knowing what you're gonna do before you come in there and know what tools you have available. And let, like, I guess to take from you, let the person who's using those tools build your house, man, craft some shit, like, you know, make some amazing mm-hmm. things. Cause you did with us. Amen. You did with us. Um, I don't know how much time I have left with you. I don't think it's much because I know that you had like only an hour with me and we were supposed to go 6.30 to 7.30. It's 7.27 now and we started a little bit ago. So yeah, uh, you know, heavy, heavy with one more question and then we'll wrap. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I, I think that what I want my question to be is something that motivates bands. I want bands to know like I want them to know that they can do this, okay? So while you might consider this a pep talk answer slash question type deal, like, you know, what do you say to bands that just get discouraged, dude? What do you say when they're like, look, you know, I see I, I see other people doing it, but I, I don't know what to, what I'm doing wrong. I, I sunk $5,000 into this campaign. I paid this dude $700 to duh, I did blah, 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 yeah. I'm so discouraged and they're rightfully so discouraged. So what do you say to, what do you say to people like that? You know, that while, yeah, it's going to boost in their spirits up, but it's just real talk. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think like the, the practicality of the way that I answer things ends up being the inspiration. Cause yeah, I'm very bad at being juju boo boo with it, but like, clearly, if I had to clearly, say anything, yeah, yeah. 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 If, if I had to say anything, it would be, that everything that you see that somebody like somebody who's doing well they have the slogan of this failed so so much and there is not one person here you know who is doing incredibly well that hasn't worked their ass off to get there and as much as you want to point at somebody like taylor swift and say that you know her dad bought her her fame yes she had a head start but you know what doesn't buy you like, it doesn't buy you that amount of an iconic artist tier. Like, there's no ad campaign that does that. It's an intense amount of work, focus, and dedication to your craft. But it's also a ton of being crappy. Because every single person who's fantastic, like you think about any great basketball player, any great musician, you just don't know about a lot of the stuff that's failed. Like, that's the nature of social media. That's the nature of how we remember people. Like, you don't remember the last 800 September morning posts that didn't do well. You remember, like, the 10 highlights of the last year. But of all of that, they've spent, you know, do- like, dozens and dozens of... I mean, not dozens and dozens. They've spent probably a decade in other bands, in other formations, doing things that ended up being a total waste of time if you look at it in the short term. But that was then the information that they needed to then do really, really well with September morning. So it's to not be discouraged because it's the experience that everybody has, but you don't get to see that because we're on Instagram where you only see the highlights. You know, you don't know the story of how an album that you just saw came out and you're blown away by every song is great because they wrote 90 songs. And these are stories I've heard of really, really great records where they start with 90 songs and they whittle it down to eight. 90 fully written songs that get whittled down to eight, but you don't see that. Like, you know, of you you don't know the story. Like, you don't see that stuff where there's somebody who does 30 photo shoots and they use two of them. And they paid 30 photographers and went to 40 locations and, like, did all this stuff. That's just the stuff that you don't see by nature of the internet, by nature of press releases, by nature of all of that. And in, it, in a sense, it actually is coming down more because pre-internet, you could you could fully hide yourself. You didn't, you know, you'd have to tell Rolling Stone, hey, you know, we're here for a press release. Um, But it's still, there's, there is always going to be this pressure to present yourself as this perfect, beautiful creature. Um, And it's just not true. So if, if you're discouraged, just understand that that's like, that will always be there. You will always fail. 
there are dudes with plat. I talked to Kane Churko, who has too many records on his wall when I visited him. Um, and he's like, yeah, I still deal with imposter syndrome. And it's like, oh, really? Like millions of records later and like, I don't know how many gold records he has. Too many. Uh, all of that, you still question yourself and like you still mess up. And he's like, yeah, all the time. Like that's just the nature of it. And just, just it's like being comfortable with it and using that hunger to become even more focused and even more willing to try things. Because I bet if I DM Kane right now and say, hey, man, if you know, if you want to get into songwriting, what do I do? He's probably going to say, write, write 300 songs right now. Like that's that's the answer. And you're not going to become great without just doing it and knowing that it's going to suck, coming to peace with that it's going to suck, and then just trying, learning, and growing. So if I had to leave people with that, it would be that mishmash of all that stuff. Um, you're going to suck. That's facts. Like, my first podcast episode, I haven't listened to it because I don't want to. I'm sure if I listened to it, <laughs> I, I would realize what a transformation of a host I've been. Um, yeah, look. And <laughs> Dude, the first, actually, this was like three months ago. We went and listened to to a new, uh, not to, new, the opposite of new. The first EP I ever recorded, and I, actually, I didn't mix it. My, my bandmate did. Like, you know, obviously, it's trash. But that's what you got to do to realize you can't, you know, get away with, like, that's not how you do it. And I and I could have studied for 100 hours and then made the, the same product or worse because I read about it too much instead of did it. Um so just like don't worry you suck now that's normal and that's what everybody's had to do in order to have momentum but you just you just never never see it so and rant that's no that's perfect that's perfect that's perfect everyone needed to hear that so to wrap this up uh really briefly Tell people where they can find you on social media so they know after watching this episode to where, where, where they can check out all of your inner tidbits on the social web interwebs. Perfect. So you go Instagram, John, J-O-H-N, underscore McLucas. That's McDonald's George Lucas put together. And just look up my name on Facebook. I'm the only one that's it's like a real estate. It's obviously not like the real estate guy. Like, look at me. Come on. Um, so th there's that. You know what? I could because of my people skills, but I don't look like the real estate person. Sell you house, I will. Mix your album, master it, I shall. Like, yeah. Like, you know. Anywho. Think that's anywho. a unique value proposition. I'll buy. I'll help you buy a house, and then I'll mix your record for you. Um, yeah. But um, as well as that, you can go to uh, bit.ly slash John is music, or just look my name up on YouTube. It's the one with the blue background. Uh, you can go look at my old drum covers. I mean, I leave them up there because they get views, and it's like, I have it funneling to my new channel, so, you know, whatever. Um, but that's really it. I, I don't think I'm going to expand into anything else. Maybe LinkedIn, but I don't, I don't update that at all. I'm going to be, when we stop recording, I'll tell you some interesting things that I'm going to be doing. Um, I need to get you in on the beta for. But that's everything, and feel free to DM me. I'm always down for people who have questions or want to know, like, if you have a question about anything. Um, don't make it a Googleable question. Don't ask me, you know, how to turn on a camera or, like, what's an EQ but if you have, if you want, you know, sorry, I, I, I've started responding to people with that. Like, Yo, like I'm not gonna sit here. When the question you asked, I can copy and paste it into Google and give you the first search result, it's and then that. that's the answer. To yeah, question. it's that. Like you're not even. I'm not mad that you asked me a question. I'm not even mad. It's not even the most. It's just. It's, it's more of an annoyance of yo. You do know Google exists now. Um, at any, yeah, but at any rate, yeah, um, we're going to go ahead and stop recording and uh, end the meeting a few minutes afterwards. Y'all, go follow John McLucas. This guy is amazing. Um, I'm proud to call him a new friend. We are happy to develop a continuous business relationship with this guy, mixing and mastering future past tense of never work when we, when we have it ready, maybe next six, nine months when you're finally free. And then uh, beyond that, um, y'all enjoy yourselves. Fail till you don't. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Fail all that till fun you don't stuff. forever. Love it, man. Thank you so much. It has been an honor, sir.